Hello, and welcome to CB8 Speaks. This is a new program which is focused on Community Board 8, which is about the Upper East Side and Roosevelt Island, our issues and the exciting things that goes on in this neighborhood. And uh, the Community Board is um, a very important part of that. This program is designed to bring to the public not just members of the Community Board, but all of Manhattan, all the issues and um, and uh, uh, plans and, and um, items of interest that come to the community board. Tonight we're going to start off by uh, talking with the chairman of the community board, David Liston, who is here with me tonight. I'm Monica McCain Sanchez. I'm a public member of Community Board 8. So welcome, David. Hi, Monica. Thanks for having me on the show. Well, thank you for, for coming. Um, David, let's get started by just telling everybody exactly what is a community board. Community boards, and there are 59 of them throughout the city, they're made up of volunteers appointed by the borough president with the advice of local city council representatives. The community boards sit several times a month and they look at a wide range of issues, essentially every facet of city living uh, in one way or another. And the board makes recommendations to city agencies. Mm -hmm. Essentially, community boards are the voice of the community. If government is to work, it needs to know what the people want and what the people's concerns are. And community boards are a way of facilitating that communication. And um, how, um, how, who exactly gets involved in a community board? What kind of people get involved with it? All sorts of people. And I think that's why community boards work people of all ages. We have high school students. We have senior citizens. We have people who have long since raised their kids, people who've never had children, people who are the parents of young kids. We have people who are retired. We have people who are just starting out in their careers. Mm -hmm. uh, in almost every sense, our, our boards are representative as much as possible of our communities. How did you get involved with community boards? Well, the way I got involved was that uh, I had been involved in public service. I had been an assistant DA with the Manhattan DA's office. I enjoyed that very much. I felt good about being a part of government and public service. When I left the DA's office, I went to work at a firm. I enjoyed that, but I missed being a part of the community, being a part of feeling as if I was helping the community. So I got involved in some local community organizations. And I think like a lot of people on the board, through my involvement in other community activities, I just got more and more excited about participating in the life of the community. I was involved with the Neighborhood Center uh, at my church. I was involved with the 19th Precinct Community Council, which is an organization that helps bring the police and the neighbors together mm -hmm. to talk about public safety issues and ways of cooperating with each other. Through that involvement and a few other things, um, I started hearing about the community board. And more and more I realized that all the other things I was involved with were helpful and important and gratifying. But the community board was a particularly unique way uh, to serve my community and be involved in the life of the community uh, and work alongside people who in many ways were each very different from the other. But every one of us believes that people can make a difference in government uh, just as much as government can make a difference in people's lives. Uh, let's talk about you. Uh, what do you do uh, outside of community board work? Sometimes it doesn't seem like much else. <laughs> the community board takes up a tremendous amount of time. Uh, it's entirely worth it, but it is a lot of time. Mm -hmm. uh, but I'm an attorney, so I work full time at a law firm, and I'm still involved in most of the other community activities uh, that I was involved with before I got onto the community board. What about other people who are on the community board? What do they do outside of volunteering on the community board? Well, just about everybody on the board is involved in other ways in the community. We have people who are involved in the uh, CERT teams, the emergency response teams. Uh, we have people involved with all sorts of block associations, landmarks preservation organizations, um, you name it. Mm -hmm. And how do they get involved with community boards? Uh, how do they hear about them? How, how do they get on the board? I guess there's two ways. Sometimes people get involved the, the way I did. Mm -hmm. They just want to get more involved in local government. They want to be a part of uh, the life of the city, mm -hmm. and, they, and they want to get involved. A, a lot of people, though, get involved with the community board, or at least first hear about it, because of a problem. 
typically a lot of the people who come to our meetings are there because there's a problem. They're not really there because everything's going perfectly. Um, they're there because there's a bar that's creating too much noise. Um, they're concerned about the closing of their street for a street fair. Uh, they're concerned about preserving an historic neighborhood or an historic building. Um, different, every single person comes to the board for, probably for a different reason, but more often than not, it's a particular concern about their life and their community. Mm -hmm. And at some point they realize that the community board is often the first and sometimes the best place to try to get those concerns uh, recognized mm -hmm. and resolved. Um, can you discuss a little bit more about the community board itself? It's not just one board, it's a bunch of committees and their staff members. Could you describe that for the audience? Sure. The, the community board has 50 board members, as I mentioned, and each of us serves on several different committees. The committees um, represent just about every area of city life. We have trans a transportation committee. We have a street life committee that focuses on bars and restaurants. We have a landmarks committee that focuses on preserving historic neighborhoods and uh, architecturally significant and historic buildings. Mm -hmm. We have a budget committee that looks at the city's budget and advocates for our citizens so that their priorities can be factored into the budget making process. Um, we have a zoning committee that looks at zoning issues. Uh, we have a health, seniors and social services committee, a youth and education committee, all sorts of committees. and. Uh, the way these committees work is they study different issues. Uh, members of the board or members of the community will bring their concerns to the board. Mm -hmm. As chair, one of my jobs is to help uh, approve the agendas for the different committees. The committees will study whatever issues need to be studied and make recommendations. Their recommendations, the committee's recommendations, are made to the full board. Mm -hmm. The committees meet throughout the month. The full board meets uh, twice a month and it sits and listens to the reports of the committees and uh, sometimes accepts those recommendations, sometimes doesn't accept them, but ultimately uh, the board will typically vote and uh, make recommendations to the appropriate city agency. And what happens after that vote is made? Does the mayor sit down and say, well, Community Board 8 wants it and it's going through. I mean, what's the influence? How important is it? Well, it's a, it's a good question because we, uh, as board members, spend so much time and we invest so much energy, mm -hmm. uh, and the public invests so much time in, into the whole process here with the community board. So we all do so hoping that, expecting that, mm -hmm. believing that it'll make a difference. And we believe, and I believe, more often than not it does. We are purely advisory. Mm -hmm. We cannot legislate. We cannot enforce the law. Um, all we can do is make recommendations. But when we make recommendations, we do so with the power of, first of all, 50 board members. Uh, we only act by a majority, so our resolutions are backed by the majority of the board. And the board itself represents over 210,000 people. And so typically, and, and by the way, our board meetings are often attended by hundreds of people. Mm -hmm. We will hold hearings at which we'll hear from hundreds of people. And so our community boards are really a laboratory and an opportunity for people to study and exchange ideas and so when we make a, a resolution or make a recommendation, I believe most agencies and most city officials recognize all the effort that went into that. Mm -hmm. And more often than not, they listen to what we have to say. What are the um, big issues that have come before Community Board 8 in the last year or two? There have been so many. Mm -hmm. uh, there, there really is never a dull moment on Community Board 8. Our mm -hmm. board, it's very diverse in terms of the issues. Mm -hmm. um, and as a result, we deal with all sorts of issues. We just for instance, um, for years we were hoping for and advocating for a Second Avenue subway. Mm -hmm. The Upper East Side is terribly underserved in terms of subways. The West Side has several subways. We pack every day uh, into one line. Mm -hmm. We've been asking for a subway for a long time. It looks like, God willing, we'll get it one day. It may take a while. But in the meantime, our board has been grappling with uh, issues related to the construction, the displacement of residents, the impact on small businesses by the construction. So that's a very important issue that we have dealt with and that we've continued to deal with. Mm. We've also dealt with, uh, tragically recently, the death of two construction workers and the injuries of a number of people uh, as a result of a crane accident. Yeah. So recently we've been studying very carefully uh, issues related to crane safety and we've been making recommendations. We recently held a forum mm -hmm. attended by a number of elected officials and many people from the community that's something that we've also focused on. 
We've dealt with issues related to the Julia Richmond Education Complex. It's a school in our neighborhood uh, that a lot of people feel very strongly about and very much want to see stay in our neighborhood. There's been discussion of it being uh, eliminated and, that, and having the space used by Hunter College, mm -hmm. another very important part of our community, uh, to create a laboratory. And so for quite a while, our board wrestled with issues related to that. We've made our recommendations. We're opposed to the swi swi uh, switch. We'd like to see JREC stay where it is. Mm -hmm. Those are just some examples of some of the issues with which we've grappled in recent months. Well, looking into the future, what do you think is going to be the next big issue coming for um, Community Board 8? Well, we're going to continue to deal with a lot of these issues, mm -hmm. particularly with regard to the Second Avenue subway. Um, we are also, um, it's interesting, with the change of the economic conditions. For a while, Community Board was grappling with uh, the challenges posed by monumental growth. Mm. Our neighborhood was just exploding. Buildings popping up like mushrooms. Um, and they're still being built. And that has created a tremendous amount of uh, pressure. Mm. Um, that growth, of course, came out of good economic times. Now, as we all know, we're facing more difficult times financially. And I suspect that what we'll now be dealing with, instead of the issues related to growth, uh, I think we'll probably be dealing with a much tighter budget mm. from the city. One of the things the board does is advocate for the needs of our community in terms of the budget. And as that pot of money gets smaller and smaller, I don't think the needs are going to get any smaller. They'll probably get greater. Mm -hmm. So I think that's something that we as a board uh, will struggle with. Um, we didn't really get into defining what is the geographic area of Community Board A, because I think it would be a big surprise to some people about oh, the, the, the boundaries. Could you describe to everyone what the area is? Sure. Community Board 8's district is essentially the Upper East Side. Our district covers 59th Street mm -hmm. to 96th Street. Uh, Roosevelt Island is mm -hmm. part of our district, a very important part of our district. Right. And a very unique part of our community. From Roosevelt Island all the way over to Fifth Avenue. Mm -hmm. So we represent almost, I think, 230,000 people. It's not only big geographically, but I think in terms of the, qual you know, qualitatively. It's a very unique community. I think some people have an idea of the Upper East Side as sort of monochromatic, sort of this monolith of just, you know, luxury high-rises and chauffeur-driven folks. And, and we have that. We sure do. But we have also um, housing projects. Mm -hmm. We have uh, many blocks of five-story walk-ups. We have um, people struggling to get by. We've got working poor. We've got people living below the poverty level. We've got a lot of senior citizens. We've got a lot, a lot of people struggling to raise families here in the city. So I know you're asking about the map, essentially. But yes. within, that, within those boundaries, there's also a tremendous amount of diversity. Mm -hmm. I would say. And um, you've been on the community board for how many years? Five years. And how long have you been chairman? Three. And are there term limits? There are. There are. The board chair is limited to three one-year terms, and I'm now rounding the bend in my uh, last term. You're a lame duck. I don't like to think of myself <laughs> as lame. I'm sure I'm a duck, but I don't, know if, uh, I don't know if I'm lame. What do you want to try to accomplish before you end your term? Well, I, when I started my term, mm -hmm. focused on attendance. We had an issue with attendance. Uh, we had a lot of board members who just didn't show up. Mm -hmm. We had a lot of board members who chronically uh, arrived late uh, or left early. We typically struggled to have a quorum, uh, to have enough people to actually act. Um, we also had issues with courtesy. Sometimes the board was not as courteous to the public as it ought to have been and to each other. Um, also, the process you know, wasn't everything we thought it could be. Um, at least we thought we could make it better. And so over the last few years, I've tried to build upon the work of my predecessors. We've had some excellent chairs on our board. Mm -hmm. We've been very lucky. And, I tried to pick up on their momentum and build upon it, uh, and I intend to continue to do that. Mm -hmm. Our attendance is way up. Um, I think people are pretty excited about being on the board. I've tried to uh, boost morale, and I'm going to continue to try to do that. I think we're all very lucky to be on the board, and uh, in the time I have remaining, I just want to really focus on uh, getting more, more transparency to what we do. I think if the board is to really be effective and mm -hmm. to have its opinion really count, people have to respect the process. And the process has to be transparent, mm -hmm. it has to be accessible to the public, um, there has to be a sense of accountability, 
and uh, I'm going to continue to focus on those goals uh, for the time I have remaining as chair. And certainly we'll continue to support the next chair, who I'm sure will also focus on that. Now, how can people get involved with the community board? I mean, how can they, if they want to be on the board or if they want to just, you know, participate to some extent, what do they have to do? Well, for starters, people can just come to the meetings. Uh, mm -hmm. Sometimes I think they're better than TV. And they're pretty entertaining. The issues are pretty... I'll agree with that. Yeah, I've been, been to a few. You they know. are very entertaining. <laughs> they are. Yes. Sometimes <laughs> it looks like a three-ring circus. Um, and I say that because, you know, people get very excited mm -hmm. about the issues. Mm -hmm. we, the people who come to boards and who serve on boards tend to be pretty strong-willed. Uh, mm -hmm. They're not neutral about most things. Uh, and they're not shy. They're, they're really the best of New York. I mean, New Yorkers are not shy people. New Yorkers mm -hmm. have opinions. I think New Yorkers have very high expectations of government. And community boards are that times 10. And so if you go to a board, you're going to see some strong-willed people arguing about and sharing ideas about issues about which they feel strongly. And sometimes it's very entertaining. And it's certainly interesting. So for starters, people should just come to the meetings. After coming to a few meetings, they may say, hey, I kind of like this. I'd like to be a part of it. I'm mm -hmm. tired of just watching. I'd like to really participate. Um, there's a couple things they can do. They can seek appointment by the board chair to serve as a public member, which would allow them to serve on a particular committee mm -hmm. uh, and vote on that committee's issues. Um, or they can also apply for board membership. It's a, a process. There's applications on our Community Board 8 website, cb 8 m dot mm com -hmm. and on that website not only will they find an application but they'll also find lots of information about what we do and our schedule uh, so the bottom line is people should show up that's uh, Woody Allen once said 70 percent of life is showing up <laughs> 70 percent of the community board is simply showing up mm. and then to and, and pursuing it beyond that if there's an interest I've noticed in the neighborhood sometimes I'll see postings on lamp posts in fact that's how um, I started going to community board meetings many, many years ago. I saw a, a, a flyer posted on a lamp post for the Second Avenue subway. This is way before they broke ground. Uh, can you talk a little bit about the postings? Because I think that's one way that I think a lot of people hear about um, meetings that are coming up. Well, I think if a community board is really to work, it has to listen to the community. And it can't listen to the community if the community doesn't even know what we're looking at, what the issues are, when we're meeting, where we're meeting, what the agendas are. And so one of the things we do on the board is try to get the word out in every way possible. We post our calendar on the website, mm -hmm. uh, but we also sort of do it an old-fashioned way. We have these flyers. We put them up throughout the community. Mm -hmm. A lot of people first learn about the community board because they saw those flyers. You mentioned seeing them yourself. Yeah. Um, they're a great way of getting the word out to the public. Mm -hmm. And. Um, do you ever try to get the, the flyers uh, in specific spots, or um, how, how is that, that done so that people, when they're walking down the street, where might they look? Typically, if, if a, a bar or a restaurant uh, is applying for a liquor license, for example, mm -hmm. or a sidewalk cafe, or if the owner of a building is seeking an application or filing an application to modify a landmarked structure, mm -hmm. we will post in that immediate area because we want to make sure that people who may be affected by whatever it is that's being proposed know what's happening and know they have a chance to be heard. So typically we will post uh, right outside the establishment, uh, right nearby. We'll also ask the applicant to post in their window. Yeah, that's a good idea. And uh, we'll also go to the nearby corners and mm -hmm. post each of the four corners. Mm -hmm. And the goal there is to try to get the word out. What do you think is the best part of being on a community board? And there's so much about it mm -hmm. um, that I've enjoyed and I think most of us enjoy. Part of it is just finding out about what's going on in your community. You, know, you can read things in the paper, but on the community board you find out about things firsthand. You get to speak to mm -hmm. and listen to uh, city agencies, neighborhood organizations, applicants, mm -hmm. and you really get to the sense that you've got your finger on the pulse of your community in a very direct away. Mm -hmm. So there's that sense of involvement uh, that really is gratifying. Mm -hmm. And not only is there that, but there's a sense that you have an impact. That you're not just sitting around complaining or wondering about things. You're participating in the decision-making process. That's an important thing, and I think most people find that uh, very gratifying. And then finally, there's just the company. Mm -hmm. um, you get to meet all sorts of people. 
uh, owners of bars, owners of restaurants, representatives of hospitals, people from museums, people from every city agency there is. Um, you get to meet them and learn about them and understand what they do and who they are and what issues they deal with. Mm -hmm. It's tremendously educational. And then finally, the members of the board, we all come from different backgrounds. We all have different ideologies, different perspectives. We often have different points of view. Mm -hmm. uh, sometimes it seems as if we can't agree on the, the, the outside temperature, <laughs> let alone the issues with which we're dealing. Yeah. And yet, we all have in common the fact that we care deeply about our community. That's why we're there. Mm -hmm. We're not getting paid for this. The hours can be very long. Um, but we're in it, and we're in it together, and we're all in it because we care about our community. And there's something very special about being around people like that um, mm -hmm. that's very, very gratifying. I think I once heard you say that community board is the lowest level of government. Um, can you explain how did community boards come about? How long ago were they created? Well, community boards were created in the 1950s. Mm -hmm. uh, they were originally called community planning councils. Mm -hmm. They were created by the borough president, uh, Robert Wagner. He wanted to create them and give people an opportunity to give him advice and other agencies advice mm -hmm. about various issues. And eventually, Mayor uh, Lindsay in the 70s changed them to little town halls. And essentially over many years, and with different names along the way, the modern day community board emerged. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the thing about community boards is this. Tip O'Neill once said that all politics is local. Mm -hmm. And I think he must have been thinking about community boards or easily could have been. Mm -hmm. Because community boards, in, in, a, in one sense, in terms of the hierarchy of the government, they certainly are on the lowest rung of the ladder. Mm -hmm. But that also means they're the closest to the people. They represent the people. They are the people. Yeah. And so they really, they get to hear the complaints first, they get to hear the concerns first. Uh, they know because they're right there on the ground, mm -hmm. getting input from their neighbors and from themselves and their family and their friends about the issues that really matter. And at the end of the day, you know, global issues are, issues are important, no doubt about it. National issues are important. But day in and day out, what really affects people's lives is often the bar at the corner that makes too much noise. Um, you know, where are you sending your kids to school? Are you safe? Do mm -hmm. you feel safe? Mm -hmm. Is your city responding to your needs? Is it serving you? Is it accountable? Is your local government transparent? Are the local agencies accessible? And, and the community board plays such an important role in that part of life uh, that in many ways I think we're in some ways more directly related to everyday life for most citizens. So y you mentioned, you know, maybe a, um, a local bar once or is opening up needs a liquor license. So does it happen often that the, the bar owner will find out who's on the community board and say, you vote for me and you can have liquor for the rest of your life? How does that work? What, what happens when somebody makes an approach like that to community board member? Well, community board aid, I think like most community mm -hmm. boards, recognizes that uh, conflicts of interest have no need to be recognized and dealt with. Mm -hmm. If people are going to take us seriously, they need to know that we are not going to be swayed or bought uh, or manipulated in any way. So I imagine that if, if, if someone made that sort of proposal, uh, it would be immediately shot down. And I don't have to imagine that. I know it for a fact. So it, it's, uh, it, I guess it's important for anybody watching, if, if they're not going to be on the community board or if they're applying to a community board, they have to understand the ethics involved, that you cannot influence the community board because as you know, we, we've just discussed it, it's part of the government function, right? That's right. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, so uh, what do you think is the funniest thing that has ever happened to you as being part of the community board? Can you, I mean, it's so much serious stuff, and I've been to some meetings, and they're just wild and crazy. Um, can, you, can you think of something amusing that's ever happened uh, in a community well, board? There's been a, there's been a couple of amusing uh, experiences. I can remember once, and it was, it was not only amusing, but it was very uh, touching. We had a whole bunch of students from St. Joseph's of Yorkville. It's a, sm a school uh, on the Upper East Side, mm -hmm. and the uh, students, and there were dozens and dozens of them, uh, who came out and asked us to recommend that the street in front of their school be closed during lunch hour so that they could have their recess outside. They had, really didn't have any playground. Wow. So this would effectively become their playground. 
And I remember just being so touched and moved by these young kids, each of them getting up to the microphone, some of them having to stand up on a chair uh, and talking about how much this would make a difference in their lives. But I remember that one of the very last children got up and said that actually he would be just as happy if we didn't have the street closed because this way he could just stay inside all day and play video games. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and so in a funny sort of way, you know, he only helped emphasize why we needed to recommend this. Oh my uh, gosh. It was a very wonderful experience. Um, so I suppose we could probably do a whole program just on interesting stories that come out of the community boards. What do you think was the, um, we've talked about the most uh, uh, significant issues. Um, for you, uh, what has been uh, f the most touching issue that has come out of community board work? Wow, that's a good question. There's been so many moments that are touching. I mean, whether it's at a street life committee where you're listening to someone talk about the new restaurant that they're going to own, oftentimes someone from a, recently here from another country and talking about their dreams of making this restaurant work. Um, that's, pr that's very exciting. Mm -hmm. um, just hearing people talk about their lives and their community and the difference that uh, the community board has made in one way or another, that's been very gratifying. Hearing community board members, many of whom have been on the board for a while, talk about uh, how much the board has meant to them, that's always mm -hmm. been very moving. Mm -hmm. um, have um, any celebrities ever come to the community board? Oh, sure. Yeah. Yeah. We've had lots of people. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not so good at recognizing celebrities, mm -hmm. and maybe I'm just too busy running the meeting. You know, we've had Matt Lauer. Mm -hmm. uh, I think his name is Donnie Deutsch, uh, mm -hmm. was at a meeting. Mm -hmm. um, we've had a couple of different celebrities at our meetings. Because I would imagine with the, such a prestigious neighborhood, you must have had some interesting people coming through. Um, we're, we're coming close to the end, but uh, Roosevelt Island is often overlooked as an important part of the community board. And um, Can you just speak briefly to, to some of the important concerns that they have over on Roosevelt Island? Sure. Well, community board aid is very lucky to have Roosevelt Island as part of our district. It's a very special community. It's, of course, part of a very large city, but it's a very small and unique place, almost like a small town. That's my sense. Mm -hmm. They have issues, though, and they're always concerned about the tramway and access to the island and the access of city services, and we're always advocating uh, for greater access. Well, we're actually running out of time right now, David, okay. so thank you so much for joining us, and uh, congratulations on completing your third term, and we're looking forward to seeing you at you know, the future of uh, community boards and um, of course you know, for the contributions you've made. So thanks everyone for joining us tonight. We hope to see you in the next edition of CB8 Speaks which occurs on Thursdays. Uh, I guess it's the thir fourth Thursday of each month, 8.30 p.m. on Manhattan Neighborhood Network. Thanks. Have a great evening. Thank you. Thanks a lot, Monica. Thanks, David. <laughs> Should I stop? The third announcer is going to attack Russia. <laughs> <laughs>